bitches! It's Witch Angel Nicora, and welcome back to Pester Quest. Oh, I'm so sorry I've been getting my uh, stuff out a lot so far this month. I've been trying to um, space my stuff out more to where I don't burn myself out. And uh, if I were to burn myself out, I wouldn't be able to like do stuff like this full time like I normally do. So it's better for me to just space it out and, you know, enjoy myself, not go crazy. So we are popping back in, or should I say diving back in the Pester Quest because guess what? This new chapter has two sea dwellers. I'll show them to you. Just follow me. <laughs> there we are. I don't know if we'll, if we'll get the uh, alpha kids as well, which are Jane, John, Dirk, and um, Roxy. I don't know if we will or not. We're going to find out pretty soon. I'm, I'm always keeping up with Pastor Quest. But right now we have Fight Me, F-Boy, and Life in the Dream House, Aridin and Fefri. We're going to go with Aridin. I really don't want to. I really don't like Aridin. I mean, people do love him. Especially the March Aridin. Don't ask where that came from if you don't know it. But they are, there are, are some kind of cool qualities to him because he is kind of inspired from Harry Potter. But he has more of a Draco Malfoy kind of m mindset. And he doesn't believe in magic, he believes in science. So if he were to be put into some sort of category, atheist. <laughs> <coughs> Looks like you're back on the beach, prowling around like you're looking for lost coins and trash with a metal detector. Except you're looking for friends and people whose lives you can make a little bit better with your reality warping powers. Come to think of it, maybe you should be looking for lost coins. You're not exactly made of money right now, to say the least. Hi, Arden! <clears throat> you look up and see a fishy dude sitting sadly on the shore. Not fishy in the sense that he's, that he's suspicious, but in the sense he literally has fins on his face. Although he's definitely a little fishy in the other sense, too. After a few seconds, he heaves an exaggerated sigh and turns his head in your direction. It seems his brooding has been paused momentarily. Hey, you over there. I can't get his voice right because he does that little double V in his quirk. Yeah, I'm talking to you. Hello, the one looking around to see if there's anyone else I'm talking to when you're literally the only other person around for miles. Yes, thank you for pointing to yourself. Pardon the Australian accent! <laughs> Are you the alien front slut everyone keeps talking about? Front slut? Wow! I have been called many a thing, Mr. Ampora! I have been called many a thing! <clears throat> I've been called um, a witch bitch, I've been called a, um, a whore, which was false. I have been called the Big Booty Bitch, which I am kind of because I have a big butt. <coughs> and I have been called many other things, which we will not discuss here because they are highly triggering and highly gross. But I've never been called a friend slut. <laughs> I think that's supposed to be a compliment. I don't know, but I'm going to enjoy that one. Woohoo! You tell the guy that yes, you are the friend slut. It's you. That is basically exactly what you are. It's what you do. Slut for friends. You need to ask him who called you that in the first place. You're going to need to think of forgiving you such apt terminology with which to describe yourself. Was it Solix? You'd bet a lot of money with Solix. No, it wasn't friggin' Solix. God. Jeez, you really are a hyperactive little bulge munch, aren't you? No, that was something I came up with myself. 
After hearing everyone talk about you and shower you with poise on Trollian. I'm Eridan, by the way. We know who you are! People ship you with Solix! Plus, let's just say, um, your time was cut in half by a certain jade blood. <clears throat> I'm very rich and very important around here. Okay, I may hate you with the passion of both the, with both the Altarian sons, but I do have to say I love your rings and I do love the purple nail polish. I respect that because I do wear rings a lot. I have about let's see, one, two, three, let's see, snake ring, octopus tentacle ring, demon eye, covered skull. That's five rings. No, wait, seven. I just alternate which ones I wear on the daily, you know? I got uh, one coming as well as I have eight. But three are for cosplay, and the rest are just for every day. <clears throat> and by that, I'm the only planet. Wow! You sincerely thank Aridin for his nicknaming services. Something tells you this guy might actually kind of suck, though. He sucks more bulges than you think! God, I suck. My Moira uh, can mess this, but spontaneously realize how much of an ungrateful piece of troll garbage I am recently. And they dumped the hell out of me. Ripped my damn heart out because a, a part of Grizzly offered to the gods. Aridin turns a dramatic eye to the ocean. No oh, time for our feelings, Jim. Frick yeah. You can't believe you're looking running on into the one motherfucker on this planet desperate enough just to tell a complete stranger all his troubles. Give me the perfect ammo. Ammo with which to pierce his heart. It's like, you know, the power of friendship or something. So I'm like, going through a, po going through a lot of the moment, because honestly, at this point, I'm feeling pretty worthless. Nobody wants to deal with me, or date me, or hate me. Nobody's gonna put up with my unending tidal wave of bullshit, so what are you even point anymore? Nobody wants to be my friend, and I don't blame them. That's not true! You wanna say? No, you want to scream out so loudly that the entire length of the beach reverberates with your declaration. Against all better judgment, you want to be his friend. You want to comfort this broken-hearted fish boy. I also want to grab him by his horns and throw him very far away into an ocean. Like, so far into the ocean he is lost. There's definitely something wrong with you. I agree! There is something 100% wrong with me! Oh, you just go stare at me like that. Listen, I don't do this crap for free. Open up for other people I've never met, I mean. People pay good money for this crap. A good melodramatic and poor. Rollin from yours truly usually costs a frickin' premium. Oh, what? You want me to pay to listen to you babble on about your broken heart? Dude, buy me a drink and dinner first, and then we'll talk. I mean, seriously. Buy me a drink. It doesn't have to be alcohol. Buy me some dinner. It could always be a burger or something. Very, very simple. I'm a very simple woman. And then we'll talk. And if I don't like what you're talking about, I'll just order 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 dessert, shove the cake in your face, and walk away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Woe is me, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Listen, are you gonna give me the cash or what? This guy can't be freaking serious. Why is someone this rich asking you for money? <laughs> Look, a guy could have hobbies, okay? Sometimes that means taking money from poor people because they saw, saw me when I was having one of my bigger moods. You understand, right? Awesome. Please pay me for listening to my problems. You're starting to get an idea why people might have gotten sick of this guy to dump him without remorse. Calmly, you let Aridin know that you are simply put broke as hell. Hmm. Well, well, that ain't my problem. Tell you what. If you can't compensate me with cash, maybe we can find an alternative me method of payment. I'm not stuck in your bulge! Okay? You're not my type. Unless you are one of these three kinds of people. Uh, tall, Australian, blue-eyed, blonde hair that actually is brown hair. You know, 
cynical, crazy, and into wrestling and anime and insanity. Um, tall, Scottish, hazel eyes, um, frosted brown hair that's like gold silver, like a brown silver. Um, into football, as in soccer, uh, Pokemon, anime, and shiny hunting. Or tall from Georgia, extremely handsome, wrestling fan, and into insane clown posse and gaming. Unless you're one of those three guys. No. I'm sorry. Even a woman like myself has standards. And I would not see myself dating you. Even if you were in drag. I'm sorry. <clears throat> oh, God. No, no. Shut the frick up. I'm not talking about anything dirty or heinous or anything. Just give me a little bit of freaking credit. Listen, I'm still messed up over fat. Risk breaking my heart as carelessly as a pub. He knocks over a wine glass shattering it into a million pieces. If you couldn't tell by my beach gazing, I'm very lonely. What I want is for you to accompany me on a little friendly outing. Oh! Now that I can do. I just do enjoy the friendly outing. Especially for like a, a metaphysical shop that has like crystals and wands and incense and sage and stuff like that. Or maybe to a GameStop or maybe to um, a comic book store. Or even to a thrift store where they have Switch games on sale? Is that all? Because honestly, you would have tried to get him to do something like that without any, without any sort of silly prompting on his part. Much less emotional extortion. That might be a more desperate for friendship than you at your worst. But you say, sure, you're absolutely down to do anything with him. Really? That's awesome. Eridan tries to crack a light smile and fails. He looks like he's constipated on picture day. <laughs> you know how you feel whenever you're in like elementary school and you're going to picture day and you forgot to go take a number two and you're trying to hold it in while also trying to hold in the bad fart? That's Eridan right now! <laughs> Well, I, I think I'll let you decide what we should do to get them a little friend date. After all, you're the expert in this. Also, I'll go anywhere you think of. You have an infinity of choices to choose from here. Hot damn, really? You haven't been able to start with choices ever. You choose to go anywhere with this rich fish fee hole. That's. that's. okay. Maybe having infinite choices is, is way too much. You have to narrow it down. But you certainly have more options than usual. Maybe you should ask just ask him where you want to go. You decide. Oh damn! We got a lot of choices! This is gonna be a big episode, y'all! Oh my Gaia! We have a lot of choices! And I need more peach tea real quick. If I'm gonna be doing all these, your girl needs some hydration, you know? <laughs> Okay, you're not sure where to go, go an art museum, stay at the beach, watch a movie, teleport to Earth, head to the anime store, or find a graveyard. Okay, still an art museum, meaning we go see the really cute Cerulean Blood Pirate. Not Vriska, this is the other one from like Hive Swap. Uh, stay at the beach, it's kind of boring. Uh, watch a movie. We might run into Polipa, if she's still alive. Teleport to Earth. I don't know. Head to the anime store. That was, that's what I would do! Or find a graveyard. We may find, um... Aradia. I say go to the anime store first. I mean, we got multiple choices here. So that's where you want to go. That's... Fine, I guess. Aridin's friend morphs into a bigger frown. It's clearly not fine for him. Listen, forget this whole thing. Actually, I think that maybe we are just meant to be friends. Can't you can anticipate my needs when you made your decision so carelessly. What the frick? You 
thought we, he was just on doing what, what you wanted. You were completely fine letting him. Oh, damn it. He's leaving already. Before you even pay, before you even said anything, you stopped paying attention from one freaking text box. And this is what happens. He's moping his way across the beach, away from you, like a humongous tool. <sighs> Maybe it's for the best. He was giving you some soft zebra vibes, if you're being honest. For once, you don't feel much regret for leaving a guy off your friend list. Aw, oh, man. And he's doing the virgin walk. Oh, my God. Well... I'm gonna rewind time. Give me a moment. He wanted to watch a movie! Why couldn't you make it obvious? <clears throat> yes. Hell yes. Hell freaking yes, and the was up. We are totally in freaking sync. You're not sure if that's a compliment or an insult. No, see, I already have a movie ticket. I had it for like a month. I was planning on going in a few minutes now from any now anyways. <clears throat> but clearly we, we were destined to be together as lifelong frickin' pals. Because you knew that we were always always what it's going to do. You're sorry? You had movie tickets for the entire time? Why didn't you say so? Oh you know. You don't. It wasn't if he was expecting you to know what he wanted the whole time, but you not nah, let me get to you. Moving on, we'll just do this show on the freaking road. I'm calling up the airship right now where we can take a nice little take to route to watch the planet renowned classic known as Shrek 2. Wait, Shrek 2 is like the super popular movie on their planet? Dude. Shrek is like the biggest meme on this planet. I mean, have you not looked at Tumblr? Or Google? Or hell, DeviantArt! What do you say? <laughs> your eyes widen a little and your body instinctively makes a spit take motion. You're sorry? Shrek 2? Classic? Finally, it's not speaking your freaking language. It's an unironic masterpiece that. <sighs> Suddenly, a hazy memory pops into your head of Shrek and Aridin standing side by side in that desert, surrounded by the black void of a cracked sky. And just as quickly as it pops in your head, it disappears. Oh boy, what the frick was that? Did your mind play a trick on you? Was Aridin smelling just then? You're not entirely sure why that stuck out to you. The vision was so out of place, for it not for Aradia, you'd start thinking none of your vague past memories were real. In fact, it almost makes you doubt that any of what you're experiencing is real. And yet, it is very familiar. Is there something else you forgot, somehow? You refocus on your surroundings, and suddenly you're on an airship deck. And there it is walking in front of you towards the bridge of the ship. Holy frick, the airship is huge, you say. Also, when did you get here? Uh, you walked on it like any bipedal, quadrupedal, or septipedal alien. What are you talking about? Sorry, Shrek was making you dissociate. Okay, fine, Fricka, I'll just say it again. Welcome to the airship day in Pora. It's practically my second at home, and basically it's fucking incredible in every conceivable way. No kidding! This church could probably fit a few city blocks on it, buildings and all. Hell, it could even fit at least three more conventional, less airborne ships on it. You'd probably get tired walking from end to end of the, from the damn thing if you couldn't teleport. Oh. <sighs> okay! Can I have those outfits in the back of your of your uh, closet here? Because um, they look pretty cool. Also, can I have your wand? I would like to come out on my altar. You and Aridin mosey onto the dressing room of the airship. The room is filled with a surprisingly wide variety of outfits, from var various capes to casual t-shirts to flarp, co to flarp cosplay. So well, there's a ton of crap in here. There's a pile of ornate sticks in the corner, too. You wonder. Don't touch the wand pile, by the way. They don't do anything. It's magic to fake shit, after all. Hey! You're talking to a witch here, buddy! I will personally zap you into the ocean and make you chain down there for the rest of your life without your gills. As in, I'll cut your gills off and make you drown. Don't say magic is fake. Otherwise, you will get hurt. Okay? Never say that to a witch. I take a photo of you to put a, post on my Instagram to show all my witch friends, because if you were real, they would actually eat the crap out of you. 
You resist the urge to laugh in his face. Of course magic is real. Those are all confiscations. The confiscation of unscrupulous love lads. In the store. With the... Uh, many of cash given to the owner. Definitely didn't smell so much like I, I like having here. Right. Your eyes wander a little bit more around the room. And besides the elaborate costumes of crazy labels, angsting ensemble, really? You have a lot of really fancy dresses. They look pretty neat. You kind of want, how, like, you kind of want to put one on. How about that beauty add another fan art generating attire to your wardrobe? Hell no, those dresses are mine. Well, we all know you cross-dress, Aridin. <clears throat> March, Aridin. And for those who don't know, Google it. Wait, really? No so surprise. You knew he had a sense of fashion, but you didn't know that his taste was so good. The dress looks so pristine. You have to know if he's ever put them on himself before, if he just keeps them here to look nice. Of course I've put them on before. Just the private economy. Private use only, you know. And before you get the wrong idea, no, I'm not like thinking about my gender or anything like that. When I put them on, they just feel nice and breathing and shit. I mean, let's be Let's be real, genders are more or less a fake as hell myths that put un unnecessary, unnecessary traits on people's lives anyways. <clears throat> um, are you saying, Mr. Ampora, that you're non-binary? Are you non-binary? Are you, um, agender? Are you... By gender, what are you? I mean, who cares what your gender is as long as we can, as long as we can be friends? I wouldn't even care if you were, you know. A girl? Secretly underneath all that outfit? <laughs> but you never know. I mean, gender is pretty much a spectrum. It's awesome. It's always fluctuating and you're always trying to figure out who you are inside. Me? I'm happy just being a woman. But everyone else around me is free to be who they want to, you know? <clears throat> it's just so arbitrary, you know what I'm saying? It's nobody's practical benefit, I might add. It's not like I even want to trust who I signed differently above even long back a lot time ago. Well, we do have a transgender male troll in High Club Princeton. He's awesome, even though he's a little perverted. And we do have non-binary trolls, and they're awesome too. Point is, the concept of gender is strict binary is not cake. It's quite a wrong. Not sounds like they sounds like it's really kind of fucked up. Especially some people who go on stage it's, it's astounded that they're immutable frickin' law just using it as an excuse to divide people up and block their superiority. Aridin is non-binary! Aridin is non-binary. But then again, he could be using he, they pronouns and still be non-binary. Or he could be agender, you never really know. But I'm still sticking with my head cannon. That Aridin is non-binary, but he just uses he, they pronouns. Oh. There's something in Aridin's voice that makes it clear that he spends a lot of time thinking about this stuff. There's something about the way he's recounting ill that makes you think he didn't learn this sort of stuff to impress people or appear woke as the kids say. Or for any reason besides the subject factoring into his own personal development in some way. Maybe Maybe he isn't so bad. Anyway, so let's, let's talk about the hemo spectrum. Anyone lower than yellow who's got a bunch of trash that doesn't probably doesn't deserve the whole life they live. Well, which is why I've planned so many raids on their neighborhoods on this very airship and spent so much time sniping legs in the air and shooting holes in the low blood feet. 
that will show them how the satisfactory sentences coursing through their veins. You immediately fall to your knees and start throwing up on the floor. You quickly reassure Aerodin that you didn't unceremoniously barf all over, all over his likely priceless carpet. In response to his overwhelming class of sentiment, sentiments and conflicting, almost hypocritical people from different hier hierarchical power structures. No, no, you just teach your guts up for some other completely different reason. It's probably something in the air that smelled. Something just probably full of crap. Yeah. Ooh, whatever you say, I guess. <clears throat> you decide to hit up the conversational go back button and challenge Aerodin on the most more, much more interesting topic that came up. Why isn't he as very public as an ally if he's so fascinated with, with, the, with the subject of gender? What are you kidding? No, no, I haven't freaking done anything. Even if I were, I would not know what you noticed from my whole quadrant situation. People know and hate me. It's like... I've been such a relentless flat that it's become policy at some theaters and rituals for employees to stab specifically arid and poor in the hand. I annoy them. Which isn't too big a deal, because violent bloods like me are pretty freaking sturdy, but... I suck, and I bet that happens plenty knows it. To the extent that, like... He's gender non-conforming! Right there, in the sentence, he's gender non-conforming! Oh my god! I normally hate Aridin! I really do! But, he is openly gender non-conforming, and I love it! I don't know how to feel! I don't know how to feel! <clears throat> Seriously, he may be a tremendous sea-dwelling butthole, but he is actually pretty straightforward when it comes to gender non-conforming. That is so neat! Also, I'm so glad if I clapped many times in this episode, I'm just like, really excited. If they openly supported something like the destigmatizing of gender non-conforming trolls and any existing groups that will hate me, and anyone outside of those would use me as an excuse to drive the seriousness of, of it all. And I'm not going to be selfish about this thing in particular. Oh. You really didn't... really didn't think about it all like that. Even then, it surely wouldn't be as bad as Erdogan thinks, right? Eh. There's a point in me to being hated. Comfortable with it, even. Or at least it means something's thinking about me. There's a palpable loneliness in his words. Maybe this is why he's so desperate all the time. Anyways, let's talk about something else. Like Solix. Do you know if he has the limited slightly salt after double bulge or not? Just curious. Erdin. Are you trying to make the aerosol ship even more out to sea than it is now? Like, people ship this so many times, it's absolutely damn near canon. <clears throat> what? Freaking out, that's doing myself. Before you can say anything to dissu dissuade him from simultaneously being a huge creepy asshole to one of his friends, and possibly unraveling one of the most unnecessary mysteries of troll biology, Aerodin whips out a palm husk and starts frantically dialing in some numbers with extreme precision. Oh my god, look at his phone. He has this freaking waterproof iPhone, I think. I think the, uh, I think he has an iPhone. Technically, because a palm husk is more or less like an iPhone or Android, depending on which you're talking about. But from this side, it looks like a freaking iPhone 11. Because if you tilt your side, you see like the, the triple camera right there. How the hell did you get an iPhone 11 on Alternia? Hey. For fuck's sake, it better not be about your ex again. Didn't I tell you a million times to stop talking to me already? First of all, don't rub it in about fifth pea blood and come to your house full of bullet for your skull. First of all, and second of all, no, I'm not going to ask something else. Do you have a frickin' double bulge? Wow, what the frick? 
You kind of hate this conversation. When you look at Aridin, you get the feeling that despite in initiating it, he does... He kind of does too. He's pacing around frantically. I've heard the rumors, pal. First off, not your pal. Second of all, what makes you think I ha don't have a turbo bolt? Frickle. Listen, we aren't unraveling this mystery for a couple of at least. It's way too frickin' funny to do that. You are way too damn lame. Why don't I even talk to you? You should be, you should be freaking stank there, crazy you might have a vest damn phone presence. You mean palm husk. <laughs> what the frick ever, dude? Cranky because I'm freaking irresistible, aren't you? Frick you. This is the apocalypse got freaking cancelled. You turned into a completely, completely moronic e-boy. It's driving me out of my damn mind. Well now, do even know what an e-boy is? I think he's just mad because he got cut by me super hard. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> I want to say this line so hard, but... <laughs> I want to say this so bad, but... <laughs> Yeah, I'm basically making it with FS for the past 30 minutes now. What? Hey, Salix, who are you talking to? And it's called Sub. Put Steph on the phone, you quadruple horn dick shitter! I have to mute that one. <laughs> Ooh! Are you finally making fish puns? I'm definitely, definitely making some kind of pun right now. Yeah. Listen, you stupid motherfucker. Next time I see you, I will kill you. Really now? Are you really murderous today or are you trying to get your daily nagging in of me? Listen. How do you feel this whole ass mess right now? I'm gonna head on over to the airship to keep vibing around the neighborhood in two hours. Get your dumb ass over there and fight me, frick boy. You hear a beep from the phone. Solid hung up. Aridin's face softens from an expression of rage and anger into one of tranquility and calm. Before he starts to laugh a little. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. I just... This is a day I'm about to go on while. You put a hand on his back and congratulate him. He seems as anxious as he is ecstatic at the moment. I don't know he's completely changed his demeanor from when he was about... When he was talking to Solid. It's like he was almost playing of his awfulness. Starts mumbling some stuff about what he's gonna do and say the song till he gets here. A lot of it sounds pretty rude, but also rather informative. Like what a wrestler says when they have a fictional beat. Gotta, you decided to take this opportunity to snatch a cape. Gotta, gotta update your ever growing wardrobe. Oh, another burps. <clears throat> some time passes and you're making, and you make your way to the airship deck with Aridin. Having trouble keeping his face from cracking into a smile. Or at least the closest expression you've seen to him having one. So it's all that hovers in front of you, a couple dozen feet above. When you look up at him, his frown contorts into something more akin to a snarl. Red and blue energy starts crackling around his eyes like lightning. Remember when I asked you to stop calling me? What? I've asked you literally 40 times to stop calling- to stop doing that! To fool me other things! And you haven't listened! So I've decided, I'm gonna cut you out of my life, one way or another. Understand? Uh... You look at Aridin, he looks a little less ecstatic than he did before. He glances directly at Solox above him with a worried look on his face, shifting his general stance so he can better keep his balance. He has a feeling this is more than he bargained for. You look down to the ground and reflectively brace yourself for impact. You felt combat psionic before with Azaja, and crap gets crazy fast. It's a good thing you did, too. You can hear a much louder crackle this time, and look back up at Solid. An aura now visibly enveloping his body. He's glowing red and blue, with lightning still energizing into existence away from- into the way from his eyes. Oof. You feel the shockwave of the pure psionic force weighing you down, making your legs feel, 
feel more like jelly every second. It's as if gravity itself is bowing down to solid. <laughs> We're gonna drink tea before that one. I didn't want to ruin my throat. Come on now, is this, uh, is this all you freaking got? Something about Arid and Steve's taunt tells you this is absolutely more than you bargained for. Nevertheless, he pulls out his gun and aims it right at Sogs with a completely unwarranted confidence. Sogs' psychokinetic force is so overwhelming that your legs give out, you hit the deck, stomach to the floor, knees to the ground, and your butt in the air. That's a harpoon! Yeah, there's pretty much no way you can stop this. Sogs shoots freaking laser beams out of his eyes, and Aridin returns the favorite with his own gun blazer, resulting in the most anime ass beam struggle you've ever seen. The clash ends in a huge explosion of smoke that obscures everything from view. Defying the force of the blast, you zap into the smoke just to get a better look. You're quickly met with a vast array of shurikens spinning wildly through the air in front of you towards Aridin, using the smoke as cover. Aridin blasts most of them away, but the largest lodges itself right into the barrel of the gun. As if to say, nothing personal, jackass. Sog flies up from behind, swiftly kicking, drop kicking Aridin into a cannon, which seems to have been loaded with... Glitter? <clears throat> when Aridin crashes through the other side, he's collapsed covered in scrapes and confetti. He's bleeding less than you expected. Nothing personal, jackass. By the time Aridin gets up and slides the shuriken from his gun, Sog has disappeared from both of fields of view. What the hell did he... You, you, you hear little tons of rock crumbling from below. You look down and see nothing. You look left, right, behind you, all around, upwards. Ah. He's above you. Pointing upwards. Levitating some kind of humongous... Some kind of... IS THAT A freaking SHOPPING MALL?! Did Sauce bring a freaking mall to a gunfight?! Wait. What mall? It's that mall! The one in an errant timeline, Daria pleaded with you to take her to Earth, away from this hellish planet society and into a world that wasn't even the slightest bit less bleak. You lose yourself briefly in your thoughts. You couldn't help Daria back then. And now that it'd be easy to fulfill that one request is impossible yet again. So frustrating! You couldn't save Daria. You couldn't save anyone. Well, maybe it's chilly for you to do that, but... Maybe you've been freaking around too much today. Maybe, and just maybe, there's someone you could save right now. That mall is massive. If the clouds of the ship from that high above... Oh, frick, you have to get out of there. <clears throat> I'm going to give you credit here, soul. Nobody's ever tried to mold me with something so freaking big. What the frick do you mean, mall you? What does that even mean? Mall isn't even a verb. No, hold on. Okay, we need to, to think of two different words that would sound the same. Wait. I literally could not care less. Salt flings it with a thankfully abandoned mall directly at Airdom with what must be an ungodly amount of psychic force. Screaming his throw raw the entire time. Okay, Frick, it's now or never. You have to get off the ship now. Airdom may be durable enough to survive getting dropped kicked through solid metal with nothing more than a couple scratches. But you? You're fragile! You probably died from tripping on the stairs wrong. But even then, there's no way Aridin's getting out of this unscathed. Maybe you have time to save him. What, what should you do? Seriously. Get in there and save him. <clears throat> you can't just sit here and let someone, even like Aridin, get sandwiched in between a massive airship and an entire freaking mall. You've got this. You're about to jump in like a freaking action hero and save Aridin. What's there to worry about anyway? All you have to do is teleport in and out. Alright, step one, tell teleport in. You zap in front of Aridin and he immediately shoots your arm off. Okay, ow. Aridin wasn't clearly wasn't planning to end you so badly. Quickly see he's rocking to the edge of the ship but using his gun's blocks of propulsion. Frick, you already had an escape plan in. Jesus, frick this hurts! Your armor was left of it! Feels like it just got plunged to the frickin' sun! Why didn't nobody tell you that sun laser beam amputation hurt this much? Distracted by the pain, you find it hard to focus on warping out of there. You can't even bring yourself to focus on Sog selling frick 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 as the titanic shopping mall 
the, the Titanic shoving Chester Hurls towards you. You try to steady your breathing, calm down, and try to focus on reality around you. Unfortunately, reality, reality doesn't stop for you, and neither does the unstoppable march of gravity, as the sheer force of them all crushes you to death. If only you were a little less fragile, maybe you'd find two boys surrounded by the rubble of a crash site, shaking at the fatal consequences of their spat. Nope. Whoops. Good thing I got one more rewind in me. Alright, it's too dangerous. Get off the ship without him. Frick it, he'll be fine. If there's anything he needs help with right now, it's, a, it's something a little bit deeper in his soul than the fact that he's being attacked by a building. You try to think of somewhere to zap. Anywhere. While you do this, you notice know Air didn't fire a blast towards the ship from his gun, propelling him away from the center of impact. You, meanwhile, just need to get out of here. As fast as your mind can take you. You close your eyes, zap away, and you feel your surroundings change. You find yourself in a wasteland. There's a ton of smoke in the distance, coming from what must be the side of the airship's crash. It takes sol solace in the fact that Salks was cognizant of the enough to of his surroundings. He chose not to send the ship crashing into a city full of people because of a beef he had with one dude. After a bit of walking, you see the source of the smoke in the distance. The wreckage is astounding. There's sharp metal fragments and concrete pointing around in all directions. But standing in front of it all is Solix. You practically zap your way towards him and ask if he and Aridin are, are okay. Well, that's so I gotta have to ask people about the shape of their bulge. Yeah, they're both fine. He's not dead. Oh, thank God. For the record, we haven't really. I, I really haven't made all the FF or anything yet. That was just to rile him up. You asked Solox what Aerodin did to him that was so bad he wanted to kill him. Okay, first of all, definitely didn't want to kill him. Way too much of a hassle. I would know if he was about to die anyway. Second of all, this asswipe called me at the ass crack o'clock and either piles out some high blood superiority garbage that he doesn't believe or complains about his love life. Basically every frickin' day. So what he's saying is he was throwing a mall at Aaron and was just to send him a message. Pretty much. You know what not long ago he actually tried to pay me lots of money to wiretap FF just to see if he ever talked to wait, just to see if he ever talked about him. Oh jeez, yikes. Naturally, I took the money and didn't do it at all. Massive waste of time and energy. Not too much and every skeevy as frick. I actually told her about that because it was getting kind of hilariously pathetic. It's how we got talking. It's how we got talking in the first place. Sorry, I kind of stumble my words a lot when it comes to Solix because he has that little list. So it takes me a while to get, you know, normal translation. <laughs> But enough about me. Why do you even care about this guy? I get your whole friend sick. But it's not your responsibility, nor mine. Maybe you saw the left is right. Maybe it's not your job as a friend to make Aridin feel better, or fix his problems, or set him on the right track. That's probably why his Moirel, why everyone gets sick of him. But you're supposed to do something here. For everyone. You can feel it. Like... You're supposed to smear your huge butt all over Destiny and say, Eat my ass, Destiny. All these kids will get the chance of good lives. <sniffs> well, now. You think this isn't some sort of kind of hero complex? Maybe. Probably. You're supposed to Aaron can be a little less of a tool bag. Is that too much to ask? Well, I guess you can do whatever you want. I won't stop you. But he doesn't deserve this, you know. Maybe not, but it doesn't change what you're going to try and do. You've got a lot to say to Aridin. You wave socks goodbye and make your way around the field of rubble. It only takes you a few minutes to fight Aridin, sitting on some rocks. Ugh. Frickin' hell like hell. He's alive! Barely. <clears throat> of course I'm alive. Is they gonna die because they got a villain thrown at me? Ugh. Actually, if yeah. the end blast was still out of the way, I'd probably have been buried under a lot more rubble. I probably wouldn't have 
and able to take myself out. Slugs could have probably done that, but he went this far to kill me. I really doubt he'd do that willingly. There's no way he hates me. That leads a decent click in this relationship. I was actually pretty close to biting the dust here. <laughs> hey, do you ever think to yourself that you have all the power you could ever want and need and the whim cater to do with this leaves? Even despite all that, you're happy moments, happy moments are as fake as magic is. Maybe even more fake. Okay. I'm going to bypass your stupid magic is fake BS and try my biggest urge not to strangle you with your own scarf. Which, weirdly, I actually have like a semi clone to. Weirdly. I mean, it's like purple like his, but it's not the, like, the vertical stripe is like the plaid pattern. There's no way I'm not doing something wrong here. Girl, it's like I don't even wonder what to think of me. Just a scumbag who set himself up to fail, right? Yeah, it's scared him if he wants the truth. He's wondering a lot if he, if he can even, even handle it. Listen, I'm not even going to be in any more pain than I'm in right now. I haven't been dumped in consecutive times. He also getting crushed into several tons of concrete too, I guess. And handle the frickin' troops, give it to me. <sighs> in front of you, you see an absolutely hopeless moron. With the chief of station and life doing no work of their own. He placed all the stuff in his social tie lives. He's trying to pick the ones that have worked for him and have, have rejected all the others. Maybe what it has done for him really. What has that done for him really? Sorry. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. Believing in this society that has only ever hurt him. Maybe not in the same way it's hurt your other friends, but not even trolls on top of the heap are immune to Alternia's brand of poison. He's six weeks old. He's a six weeks old kid who's ultimately just scared, lonely, and confused. Someone who doesn't have to be hopeless. Someone who can violently burn away all his failings and rise from the ashes like a phoenix who decided. Maybe this lifetime, let's not be so freaking racist all the time. He told Aridin to get up from his throne of wreckage on his sunken, sunken ship and start making his way to some pit stops of self betterment. Maybe more, before my folk could take grievance with him the way Sox has. Then maybe he could tear down all the false hopes that have come from him throughout the, his sweeps. Damn, I. Okay. But it's not that it's in surprisingly deep and cutting and helpful ad advisor. Of Reflection, reflection, but like, there's no way I'm gonna remember all this. At least write this down or something. Don't worry, this is a text-based game. There's definitely gonna be transcripts available online in a matter of hours. Only, we're gonna be honest, we'll have to ruminate on all this for a while. But I'm tired of, I think I'm tired of being and feeling all for all, all the time. I just, I don't know where to even begin with myself. And I think you might be asking a lot more of me than you think. Life never stops asking a lot from you. Fair point. It's pretty much going to be a long process. There's pretty much no way you can force feed a, a guy a redemption arc in the span of, of today. Hell, you'd be surprised if he didn't still suck a year from now. But even the crappiest kids can change a lot with a good push in the right direction. I, uh... Thanks for sticking by me. Even if only for today. Of course, you tell Aridin. Well, what else are friends for? And besides, your day with him isn't over. Wait, what do you mean by that? After all this, you still want to spend time with me? Absolutely. <clears throat> <clears throat> you take Aridin pan and pull him up to the skate. After all, you two still have a movie to watch. Shrek 2 with Aridin. <laughs> now that's funny. Also, are there troll horns in my popcorn? Aridin, you can have those. I don't want troll player popcorn. <laughs> Ugh. Okay. This one actually is the most difficult we've had because he is so confusing and demanding. That all the other routes we were t taking before would not work. It took a while to figure out which one was working right, so hey. At least we're not friends with Aridin.
And I'll definitely drink some peach tea to that. But, anyway, we're heading on to the last chapter of our troll friends. We're going to go with that sweet little Gloverfish. <laughs> As in Feffrey. But, until then, I want y'all to hit that like button with a big old bibbity bobbity boop. And I will see you all in the next one. Also, welcome to 2020. Hmm. Mwah! Stay magical, my friends. And yes, magic is real. Don't believe what Aridin says.